Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for presenting me. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to present today at this conference and to speak uh, about our recent developments, mainly based on the silicon nanowire-based FET. And uh, I would like also to share how we can try to extend its functionality towards the being operating like a neuron. Um, as was mentioned already by Mr. Chairman, I'm coming from Dresden, from a, actually Helmholtz Center Dresden Rosendorf. Uh, here you can see a beautiful picture of a Dresden in summer, actually in June. And um, Dresden, as you might know, also is a city in the Eastern Germany. And uh, apart from being really beautiful, uh, it also has a uh, very rich scientific culture. And uh, apart from, for example, the big technical university, it also encompasses the multiple um, research institutions like a Max Planck Society, Fraunhofer, Helmholtz, and uh, Leibniz Society as well. So all this helps us to make a great cluster of a research uh, for example, in the material science and to contribute also to the nanotechnology, to life science and uh, also, for example, a bias part um, uh, applications. And this actually brings me to the, my next slide where I would like to uh, emphasize that uh, the importance of a diversity in the technological advances and how much it's important for uh, future developments like in life science, for example, in the sensorics, in the electronics, uh, in uh, therapy, and diagnostics and so on. So uh, I would like just to give here several examples, uh, for example, how the nanomaterials uh, contributing, for instance, to a new high performance device, as you could see today during uh, already previous presentation, we will see it later. And the other thing is indeed related to so-called bio-integrated electronics and flexible electronics and stretchable electronics um, that also helps us to uh, combine the first and the second fields and to uh, represent uh, uh, devices for uh, measured for measuring some parameters on a body. Indeed, also quite important thing is reproduced by the microfluidics and the lagon chip technologies that also helps to synthesize the very interesting species and uh, to uh, control multiple chemical processes for the synthesis and for the even uh, uh, new type of electronic devices. So all these different uh, things is helps to co like contributes to the new type of uh, developments, new type of uh, um, electronics. And I would like also to uh, advertise a little bit, to, have to use this chance to advertise the recent activities of our group um, here in Dresden in the Helmholtz Center. Um, generally speaking, we are uh, using on the development of the um, development of a nano and micro systems for life science researchers. And one of the research directions is related to a biosensorics and bioelectronics, and even more specific research directions related to, for example, the silicon nanowires. And um, in particular, we, um, we are active in the um, development of the devices on the rigid, on the rigid, on the flexible uh, support on, for example, decorating this uh, nanowires with, for example, either biomolecules or with some polymer films to enhance its functionality and to make it specific in the catching of some uh, secondary molecules from a solution or from the air. Um, of course, we also work with the microfluidics and integrate the sensors in the air for detecting, say, molecules, wall cells, of bacteria and so on and so on. And uh, in the future, uh, next slide, I would like to uh, dedicate to the operation principle of the nanowire based devices actually for sensing. Um, you might ask me why I want to speak about sensing when I supposed to speak about artificial neuron. And I will answer that by knowing how operating the sensor, the sensor device based on the nanowire devices, we constructed the uh, artificial neuron that uses this principle. So this is why I wanted just to say a few words about that. So what do we know about the nanowire electronic sensors? <clears throat> Generally speaking, it is a potentiometric device that is able to transform the charge that 
in the near by of the nanowires into the change of a surface potential at the nanowire that is further converted into the change of the conductivity. Yeah. So what means this charge in the vicinity of the uh, nanowire? This can be, for example, a layer of molecules. This can be antibody or DNA. Yeah? But on the other hand, it could be also some polymeric film where the charges can be redistributed over the time. Yeah? And all this act as a gating or as a gate for, uh, for the, for the for such a devices, but such a sensors. Another interesting thing, why would you use the silicon nanowire compared to the uh, planar films? Indeed, it's clear that surface in this case is very important that they require the more surface and smaller volume plays the uh, important role to increase the current modulation for the same active sensing area. So what I wanted just to say is that we are in this case using the FET configuration. We know that it's typically traditionally used to track analog signal change, but uh, traditionally used to track the digital uh, uh, signals in the logic gate, for instance, but in sensors it's <clears throat> kind of misused uh, to track the analog signal changes. And I would like also then to emphasize what is the concept of its operation. So once the silicon nanowires are assembled as a field effect transistors, we rely, of course, on its surface to play a crucial role in the sensing these microenvironments. And once the, uh, some charges are modified in the vicinity of the wires, we try to measure it with the help of the uh, characteristics of the <clears throat> transistor device. For example, uh, when we look at the output characteristics of the devices that shown at the uh, right part of the slide, uh, so once there is the um, um, certain constant surface potential at the nanowires, this resulted in a certain distribution of the electronic states there and in a certain um, curves, uh, output curves there. But once there are new charges or new molecules are approaching the surface of the nanowires, these characteristics have been changed. They can be showed either up or down depending on the charge, whether this is a positive or this is a negative. So these uh, measurements, these curves can also help us to quantify the, the, the charges and present and the quantify the molecules, for example, uh, that are um, reaching the nanowire surface. So these principles exactly will be very important to keep in mind for the future explanations which will be used for um, uh, bind squared system. And this brings us finally to the this so-called neuromorphic devices. So uh, why neuromorphics, first of all, I wanted just to say a few words. So we know in general that all research of the people in the micro nanotechnology is during a uh, last 30 years at least is direct to um, miniaturize the devices and components to be able to reach the higher performance in the computing and operations and so on. And uh, indeed, we know that earlier or later it will finish. And this is why there's appeared an idea that maybe we should change rather than just aggressively scaling down the devices, maybe one could try to change a paradigm how we uh, perform these operations and what is the architecture of the devices should be. And then uh, the scientists came to the point of using the uh, principles that Neuron's using, actually, yeah? because it also quite efficiently performs the multiple operations, but at the same time is able to use much lower energy. Yeah? Uh, so if you think really about the about the operation in the brain, we know that there are a lot of neural cells there that are connected by a thousand and thousands of a synapses. So there is a complex neural network. So all of the synapses here is, of course, the transmission of a signal. And to assure, of course, uh, learning uh, by, for example, modif modification of a synaptic rating. On the other hand, if you speak about the neuron, its role is a learning and also information processing using, of course, some nonlinear algorithm that are implemented by the membrane of the neuronal membrane. So what we know uh, already for decades is that the synapses, uh, artificial synapses, synapses is under the active um, research, still the neuron, artificial neuron was out of reach and we wanted to work on that. So neuron would be a multi-terminal device compared to, for example, synapse that is two-terminal two -terminal device. And that brought us to our recent um, work that I wanted, of course, to speak about a little bit is about so-called uh, neurotransistor that is 
uh, using its, in its design the silicon nanowire mm -hmm. FET. In this case, uh, I wanted just to mention here that we are trying to use in this particular situation as a presynaptic input signal the voltage, actually the gate voltage of the, of the transistor and the postsynaptic output would be as the, our source drain current. Yeah? So let's try firstly to overview very quickly the fabrication of the NATO transistors, which we're doing in collaboration with the Postech. So this is a more or less standard um, uh, fabrication process used also for the CMOS technologies. So we start from the silicon insulator, uh, wafer follow with the ion implantation, uh, electron beam lithography, further implantation in the contact area, gate oxidation, and uh, finally the passivation, formation of the electrode and the passivation. So up to now, everything looks like a traditional transistor fabrication, but then later on comes the next step and we cover on these uh, devices with the specially fabricated sole gel silicate film that is uh, formed, uh, it's a silicate film that is uh, formed with a mixing the, into solution the nickel and the copper salts mixed with the precursors for forming the uh, soldier film actually. And after fabricating it, uh, we also spin coat it then on the, on the film and dry it. So actually what is interesting here is that the, uh, the, the ions are able to be redistributed with this, this film and uh, that results also in the possibility of the of the some polarized state formed within the film, and this is very interesting thing. Once being placed in contact with the silicon nanowire device, so at the end our device is looking like that. We are able to fabricate the um, silicon nanowire FETs on the large wafers, like eight inches, um, and so on. And then we are covering it with the uh, soldier film. We use the gate central gate um, terminal as our presynaptic input and each of the uh, source drain uh, terminal is able to measure the current which is used as the postsynaptic output. So what can happen when we try to measure the traditional uh, transfer characteristics of a device, of such device being covered by the uh, silicate film. So once we apply the gate voltage, the gate voltage is going basically the, the 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 field is actually going through the film through the soldier film and is leading to a redistribution of the ions within the um within the um, uh, within the soldier film and once this some of the ions are reaching the uh, reaching a closer to the uh, silicon nanowire FET, then we can sense this in a change of the surface potential there. Yeah? So basically the redistribution of the ions in the film can be sensed by the nanowire transistors. So this is actually reflected in the transfer curves of the devices that is shown on the right hand, right -hand side of the um, plot where we see that depending on the speed of a sweeping of the uh, gate voltage, we see that there is a different opening of the transfer curve here. So that means that there is the there is strong that can be achieved a stronger and stronger polarization within the film that is immediately reflected in the transfer uh, characterization uh, transfer um, curve of the devices. So basically, the ions can be redistributed within the film and they can be even stored there. But what happened when we tried to uh, measure the so-called narrow transistors uh, in a regime that is traditional for um, uh, for the neuron, basically? So it means that we need to apply to the uh, our presynaptic uh, input the pulsed voltage. So instead of applying the uh, constant voltage, we apply the pulses, which are uh, which have a period. We, we, we try different things. Uh, you can see in the right hand uh, side in graph that there are uh, pulses with a period of 250 milliseconds and 500 uh, milliseconds with an amplitude of around six watt. So once we apply in the pulsed input, this leads to also redistribution of the ionic states within the film that can be slowly and slowly somehow accumulated. There are multiple of states that can be uh, stored in there. Yeah? And this is immediately reflected in the output current and output source in current. We see that uh, the, because the surface potential at the wire is continuously changing, we see that there is a change of the baseline 
um, of the source drain current here. And of course, the source drain current is also measured to be um, uh, pulsed. So there is uh, exactly uh, very similar behavior that is observed also for the uh, neuromorphic devices here. What is also interesting to see, uh, we see that the, tra the in, um, applied pulses change their soldier film and they also change the, the output current of the uh, devices. That depends that one can try to apply something like a training pattern of the films, of the, of the pulses and to record some of the specific states, yeah? So basically, if you could say that we are applying the pulses of a positive polarity with the amplitude over 10 volts that lead to a certain increase of the source drain current, and then suddenly we stop it, what will happen? The, of course, the thermal, uh, thermal processes and diffusion will lead to the further redistribution of uh, randomization of the ions in the film, and that leads, of course, to the decrease of the uh, source drain current coming back to initial situation. This you would call it like a forgetting yeah, situation. But if instead of forgetting, we apply the pulses of the opposite polarity, we would reach the different thing, we would reach the erasing configuration, which would happen much faster. And then if you try to imagine forgetting and erasing as the really processing, yeah, processes, yeah. We can imagine that after forgetting, we can also remind uh, some information, yeah, uh, which is also happening with much faster training and learning uh, after repetitive application of the, um, of the pulses, training pulses. But in a case when the uh, information or electronic states were kind of erased, the learning again is happening very, very slowly. So this is also we measured uh, and we also quantitatively measure the time scales for the forgetting, or that is called here as a relaxation, shown as a blue uh, curve, and a depression that is shown here as the pink curve. And um, afterwards, we try to do uh, repetitive learning actually after forgetting and after uh, depression. And we see that actually repetitive learning happening much faster for the cases when the information was basically forgotten. So what does it mean that uh, such a device configuration is uh, history dependent? It depends on the history of the uh, applied training pulses and it's all reflected in the output response. Um, this is, a, we find a very interesting configuration that can be interesting maybe for in the future for building up of uh, through the neural networks, because the possibility of uh, having a large silicon wafers with the multiple devices can help us to connect them, can help us to connect them into really a network where the multiple operations and a lot of information can go on uh, further with it. So here I would like already to summarize and to just remind you that here we I tried to describe the um, design fabrication of the traditional silicon nanowire field effect transistor that became very unconventional upon um, functionalizing it with a specific uh, soldier film with the ability to redistribute the ion and store the ionic states in it. Uh, we also tried to demonstrate the uh, functions that are typical for neuronal functions and, uh, for example, like a history-dependent learning. So uh, this work is published in the Nature Electronics uh, um, last year, and I would like to thank all the authors here, especially Inhe, who was the first author, was most inspired by the idea. Also, I would like to thank our funding agencies and also thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.